He was the star of the smash hit movie Bohemian Rhapsody. While you wouldn't have seen our next guest in the film, you'll certainly never forget his voice. When someone first told Mark Martell he sounded like Freddie Mercury, he took it as a compliment. Now that uncanny ability to channel the late Queen frontman is taking him around the world. His vocals are so spot on, Queen picked Mark to cover for the great man himself. In fact, the producer of Bohemian Rhapsody said the hit film would not have been made without him. Over 125 million online viewers agree he's the closest thing you'll ever hear to Mercury. He's now in New Zealand, so you can judge for yourself. Amazing yeah. voice and the look as well. I've got to say, is is there any chance that there is some of Freddie Mercury's blood? You're in the same family, or is it you never know. Half of, uh, my mom's ancestry is British, so I don't. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I know something there. But I look more like my dad than even than Freddie Mercury. I just want to say that you made me cry my eyes out at the end of that movie, and I didn't actually realise today that it wasn't actually the voice of the actor; that it was you. Let me correct you there. It actually Ooh. was. Really? <gasps> yeah. Yeah. Revelation. I, so how yeah, did it all I, work on the movie? My voice was mixed into the movie. They oh, tried wow. to use Freddie as much as possible. And uh, to tell the story, there were some scenes where uh, recordings of Freddie don't exist. Yeah. So that's where I came in. Wow. Awesome. Can you tell which bits are you? I can definitely tell. And hey. people, people who know my voice and have been listening to me for a long time can tell. Well, you still made me cry. Was, so you to make it seamless. You still made me cry during rehearsal here. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Mark, 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 Mark is going to perform for us tonight, by the way, so make sure you don't miss we that We can all on. cry together. Yeah. Performing in front of Celine Dion, I mean, that, what was that experience uh, like? I was pretty nervous. You know, I don't, I don't remember a time in my life, I'm from Montreal, so I don't remember a time where the name Celine Dion wasn't a thing. Mm. And so to be able to sing in front of her and her be so emotional at the same time. It was so surreal. Um, so, yeah, that was a really crazy time. <laughs> you Canadians a bit like Kiwis. Did they just, was that you and Brian Adams catch up as well? All the time, yeah. We're, there's only about six of us, so, you know, so <laughs> we, we all know each other. When but, the, I want to know when you discovered you had the Freddie Mercury gift or whether it was something that you worked on, sort of realised, or how, how did that all come about? Um, the way that I learned to sing, I never took voice lessons, uh, but I listened to sing... Uh, I learned to sing by listening to the radio. Uh, but uh, shockingly, I never heard Freddie on the radio on the stations I was listening to. Uh, first time I heard Queen was in the movie Wayne's World. And right. I was <laughs> yeah. In my mid-teens. And, uh, it, but it wasn't until my voice matured later and I started my own band and people would come to our shows and say, you know who you sound like? And it was literally every single show, I would count at least five people, every wow. single show. So, you know, I couldn't escape it, so I had to embrace it. And, yeah. and have you ever had feedback, you know, from like Brian May, you know, the, mm -hmm. the surviving members of Queen? Yeah. Have you had some feedback about what, they, what, what does he reckon? I, I uh, was in uh, the official tribute band of Queen uh, for five years, which is run by Queen. Oh, wow. So I've worked, I've worked with Roger Taylor and a little bit with Brian quite a bit, and it's, and even, it was surreal to sing for Celine, but to sing uh, Freddie's music in front of Roger, uh, who drummed behind Freddie himself for 20 years, yeah. um, and to see him get emotional is just, I can't even explain what that's like. That's was so strange. Was band called Tribute Band to Queen, or did it have one of those tribute bands, slightly different names? Yeah, it's called, it was called the Queen Extravaganza. Okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah, cool. And they're still around. Uh, but I'm here in New Zealand with the Ultimate Queen celebration. And what other doors is that part in the movie open for you? Well, people seem to know my name a little more than they did in 2018. Um, and, but also due to my, my YouTube videos, I released a, I, I recorded myself performing Bohemian Rhapsody yeah. um, on Hundreds piano. of millions. Yeah, many millions of views. And, and um, you know, my face isn't in the movie, but people recognize my face, I think, from, from the YouTube. What's the hardest Queen song to sing? The hardest? That I sing on a regular basis, probably the show must go on. Okay. Uh, it's a, it's, you know, it's a very screamy kind of song, <laughs> and it's usually near the end of the 
two-hour set. So, I'm, wow. you know, it's when my, I'm maybe a little tired by then. Uh, so if I can sing that one well in a, in a concert, then I feel like it's been a good okay. show. Well, Mark's going to perform for us tonight. Sorry, can I? And, um... He's saying sorry because it's got my name on the spit in the auto queue, but you go, babe. Absolutely. So do it. <laughs> okay. uh, and uh, it is a song that you are going to recognise and you're going to love it. He's performing around New Zealand. Uh, and for now, please thank Mark Martell. Thank you so much for watching. Before we go, you can catch them performing in Wellington, Hamilton, Auckland and Christchurch this week, performing Queen's amazing song, Don't Stop Me Now. Here's Mark Martell. Star leaping through the sky like a tiger to buy the laws of gravity. I'm a racing car passing by like any good diver. I'm gonna go, go, go. There's no stopping me. I'm burning through the sky, yeah. 200 degrees, that's why they call me Mr. Byron Hyde. I'm traveling at the speed of light. I'm gonna make a supersonic man out of you. Stop me now, I'm having such a good time I'm having a ball Don't stop me now if you want to have a good time Just give me a call Don't stop me cause I'm having a good time Don't stop me cause I'm having a good time I don't want to stop at all Woo! I'm a rocket ship on my way to Mars On a collision course I'm a satellite, I'm out of control, I'm a sex machine ready to reload, like an atom bomb about to war, war, explode, I'm burning through the sky, yeah, 200 degrees, that's why they call me Mr. Byron Hyde, I'm traveling at the speed of light, I'm about to make a supersonic woman. Uh, we've had him here before, we have him here again, and he's always welcome on the program. He's in New Zealand for his ultimate Queen celebration tour, and he joins us now. G'day, Mark. G'day. Welcome back. Thanks for having me again. It's good to be back. Yeah, I think you, you were, the same, were you in the same hat last time as you came in? I absolutely was. Right, it's I, like time has not passed. It has not passed. <laughs> nice, to, nice to have you back. Um, so what's the gig? What's the, um, what are you doing here? Uh, I'm here with my band, The Ultimate Queen Celebration, celebrating the music of Queen in ultimate fashion. And uh, we're doing twice the amount of gigs as last time, so I guess last time went pretty well. It was so popular. So where, where are you going? Where about where you be doing? Uh, Wellington, Hamilton, Auckland, and Christchurch. I don't know about that order, but uh, yeah, those are the oh, you'll love Hamilton. I'll be right into you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so what's the what's the what's your um, what's your what's the big song you'll be singing for them? Is there, is there one that you specialize in? Was there one pretty song that you? What did you sing last time you were here? I don't. I honestly don't remember. You guys are you're so early that I want to um, say my, Fat Bottom Girls is I think no, what you sang for us. That was a late request no. in the interview. That yeah. might have been no from idea. Your did request. it very well. Uh, yeah, no, you did too. Yes, you did. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you did. Did I do that? Yeah, yeah, it was fantastic. You did two for us, I think, and both were brilliant. Uh -huh. Is there a song that, you, you, that is your specialty with Freddie? Is there one that you, you, you can't do? Uh, okay, so specialty, I always love doing Love of My Life um, just because it, it just kind of grabs everyone's heartstrings. Mm -hmm. One that I can't do, one that I don't do very often that I would like to do more often is um, uh, Who Wants to Live Forever, mm. which is, I think, from the Highlander yep. soundtrack. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Oh, that's such a beautiful. Why? Why, why not? Is it, do, do, does Freddie reach? Uh, <clears throat> can you? Some, do you sometimes feel you can't do his voice justice? Well, you know, sometimes I'm doing three, four shows back to back, and uh, I've I've found that three is about my limit where I can I can do it well, you know, to my standard. When uh, that fourth show is always a killer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it, in a per- in a perfect world, I'd do two, and then I'd be able to sing whatever I wanted. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, uh, love. Um, Who wants to live forever is very challenging. Um, uh, but it's beautiful. And the other th- the reason why we don't do it is that you can only put so many slow songs in a set. People want to have the energy stuff. Yeah, so. They do. They want the anthems. Now, yeah. you obviously sang on Bohemian Rhapsody, the movie. Did you love it? And how has that movie sort of changed your life a bit? Um, I mean, it's, it's de- I'm definitely busier. Um, I don't know that it's necessarily changed my life. It's, a, it's definitely, it was definitely an experience that I'll never forget uh, working on, on the thing. And, uh, you know, it was my first time seeing behind the, the scenes in, in anything movie related. So, you know, coming from the music world, it was a lot of fun. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, they, a lot of people think that <clears throat> I did the whole, all the vo- vocals in the movie, which isn't true. You know, I, they, they brought me in to fill in the gaps and uh, they used Freddie as much as possible. But, but has it changed your life? I don't know. I feel like the same guy as I was uh, last time I was here. No, I but, it, but is there more of an appetite, a resurgence yeah, of Queen? Really, you notice that? It really has proven that there seems to be no bottom to the world's appetite for the music of Queen. Like It's taken us all over the world this year. We've been to South Korea, the Mediterranean, uh, Eastern Europe. Oh, it's changed your life. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. There's the proof. There it is. There you go. Can't deny it. But you're filling venues doing Queen. Yeah. Um, why Why do you think Queen fills these venues when it comes to, the, you know, at what you're doing, a celebration, a tribute to the band? Well, what, what other, and, and what other bands do you think could have the same effect? I don't know, honestly. I mean, obviously the Beatles have a lot of tribute acts um, and we do, we do it a little differently. We don't dress up and pretend like we're Queen and I think a lot of people are attracted to that. We're just being ourselves on stage and just re- reproducing the music you know, we're the really tight, excellently. We're tight shorts and no? no, none of that unfortunately. Yeah. I wish I could pull it off. Because uh, <laughs> you only listened to Freddie about a decade ago. Wasn't that the first time when you first heard him? It's been longer than that. I, I would say the early 2000s is when I started getting into Queen. My, my bass player in my band told me, you know, because he knew that I would learned to sing from listening to other singers and because I never took voice lessons. Um, so the radio was sort of my voice teacher. And then he knew, he was a huge Queen fan. He's like, you, ought, you really ought to check out Queen. Um, and so I did. And then uh, I I've immediately fell in love with Bohemian Rhapsody and mm. uh, just tore it apart. You know, I I'd actually re-recorded the whole thing in my little bedroom studio in like 2004. And I'm thinking I might release that someday just to show people how far I've come. But uh, <laughs> Cause how bad was, you... My bedroom, yeah. Yeah, it was a bad, was it? Uh, no, oh, it was it bad? Uh, no, it's actually pretty good. I go back and listen to it every now and then. Because how do you prepare for his performance? Because they are huge. <clears throat> You've got to give it almost 150%. Yeah, it's definitely, I don't really need to uh, go to the gym. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't imit I don't impersonate Freddie, but I definitely do tip of the hat. You know, you can't stand still singing his music. It just makes you want to want to. He didn't, did he? He was running all over the show. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> should we have, should we give it a go? We would say, should we give it a go? Should you, so you, you want to give it a go? <laughs> uh, and you, you don't, you pick, I mean, yeah. who am I to tell you? What no, no, you, you had a. Yeah, I wanted to challenge you again okay. for the last time <laughs> so with lovely. Pat Bottom Girls. I yeah. would like to see if you could do some of Bicycle Race. Uh-huh. All right, well, here's, uh, just so no one gets their hopes up, here's when we don't perform in our shows, but I think I know uh, at least one line from it. Let's be back. Here we go. New 8 AMers. I love you guys. Um, I want to ride my bicycle. I want to ride my bike. I want to ride my bicycle. I want to wear it where I like. That's Whoa, awesome. that is really good, man. Yeah. Just, as, just as well as you never come in here and sing We Are The Champions. Uh-huh. I came second in many sporting contents, and that was what you would hear belting through the room. And they the never sang it for sheds. you. And it uh, scarred me personally. Uh, on, on the basis of that, can you please sing uh, yes. that, please? Oh. <laughs> I've paid my dues time after time. I've done my sentence. I'm too high. But committed no crime. And bad mistakes. I might I've made, made a few. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is awesome. Under pressure. Can you do it? Can you sing under pressure? 
like how do I pick a spot that's that I know scat. Well, do you want me to just, do you want me to check things off? With, uh, yeah, with sure. Phone? Because I had it on the car this morning. You don't want to pay for the rights of it for though. Um, What's I'm scat? Happy to. The, so there's a, there's a moments in the song where Freddie's not singing any words. It's just like that up. All right. Like nonsense. Yeah, nonsense lyrics. Like and that I, seems almost jazz like when they do that. I believe uh David Bowie was not happy with the fact that he didn't he never ended up adding lyrics to those things. He was like, do you, I think he was like, Well, you're gonna later add words to that, right? Like we're not just gonna <laughs> release the song this way. Yeah. Well, Duncan's looking for that. Rami Malek, the star of Bohemian Rhapsody, the Oscar winner. You two mates, did you guys get on well? You know, we we work together. It's it's kind of like the one of those things where uh, Hollywood. You think all the people who get together on songs are. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Is this working for you? <laughs> it's it's putting me in a good mood. Yeah, me too. Here we go. Pressure pushing down on me, pressing down on you, no man has for under pressure that burns a building down, splits a family in two, puts people on streets. Brilliant. We love you. Thank you so much for being here today.